Did you know that God's Love Reveal is not just a talk show, but it is a branch of the Garden of Life Enrichment Center, which is a 501c3 organization that ministers to the whole man, spirit, soul, and body through our mentor classes, our writing retreats, our music programs for our youth, our health and wellness awareness workshop, and our human trafficking awareness workshop. As we move forward, your support through our sponsorship packages and our monthly partnership will help us to continue the support of our programs. So consider joining us today as we change lives in a changing world. If you would like to give to the Garden of Life Enrichment Center, you can contact us by going to our website at gardenoflifeec.org or email us at gardenoflife18 at gmail.com. A new horizon is waiting for you. A new day is dawning. And welcome to God's Love Reveal, where the love of God is made alive in you. I'm your host, Stephanie Turner. My guest on today was facing 80 years of imprisonment, seven felonies. In her own words, she tells you that she's been to hell, jail, and back, all because of Prague. And she's here today to tell you her story. Kathy Tandy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be here. I'm so glad you decided to come and share your testimony. You yeah. know, testimonies help other people. Yes, amen. And they keep mm -hmm. God's love continuing on for our future generation. Amen. Yes. And so I'm so glad you came to share what God did for you. Thank you. It's I an honor to be here. I know that's <laughs> right. So I, I understand that you was caught up in crack cocaine. I was. I was. I was introduced to it by a, a young man and um, it was, my life was a spin downward from downward that spiral. point. Mm -hmm. Downward spiral, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me a little bit about what happened. I understand you're a hairstylist also. I am. Mm -hmm. And so you had your own shop and he would come visit and you got caught up in it. That's how that... Yes, well basically um, it was a, a, a friend mm -hmm. and... Um, he was already using crack cocaine, okay. and I knew nothing in about it, okay. no. And of course, I liked him, and he liked me. We got together, to make a long story short. Um, he introduced me to it, um, and I was doing hair, okay. and I would go and do somebody's hair. I put them on the dryer, I run in the house and take a hit, run back out, finish my client, okay. get paid, run back in the house, give him the money, he go get the dope. When he came back, throw him under the dryer, run wow. back in the house, and it was, that's how I began, yeah. And so you so, just continued on and continued on? I continued on. Mm -hmm. Until you start selling it also? I started dealing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was later on. Okay. Yeah. Do you yeah. know how long before, you know, you was, you was all caught up in it, how long before you started dealing it? Uh, about two years. So you were mm -hmm. just using it for about two years? I was just years. using it for two years. Mm -hmm. And then... You started to And then deal. I started dealing because um, I got rid of him. Okay. And I had a period of sobriety. Okay. And then um, I got hooked back up in it uh, by selling it, and okay. I wasn't using. Okay. And then I, I began to use. Okay. And, um, yeah, so I began to use again. So did mm -hmm. you know the Lord then? Were you saved then? I didn't. I was raised in church. Um, I did know of him. Okay. I knew uh, uh, about him, but I didn't have a relationship. Okay, that makes it. Yeah, make I didn't you have a relationship. So you're yes. just a church goer. I was a church goer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. heard about his love though, right? I heard about his love <laughs> and his grace and his mercy and Amen. I heard about all that, you I know. That's right. Um, I was raised, you know, in a Christian home and parents, grandparents, Okay. you know, so... Yeah, 
it 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 it, it it's not like I didn't know. Right. You know. Right. About him, mm -hmm. I just like like I said, didn't have my own relationship. Right. Right. That makes yeah. a difference. Mm -hmm. So you had some praying parents. I did. Okay. And so they was covering you. Yes. And prayer while you was going through all of this. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So also you so you got busted. Talk I got busted. That. So um, I got tired of, of, of being high. I got tired of relapsing and okay. going back and forth into, you know, rehabs and stress center. And okay. so um, I decided I wanted to stop. And so okay. I prayed and prayed and prayed um, for God to take it away. Okay. And he never did. Um, I, the more I prayed, the more I got high. I okay. would be, you know, smoking. Me and my friend, we'd be smoking and, and crying, um, asking God to take it away. And wow. um, it was a stronghold. It was a stronghold. Okay. Um, but God did answer my prayer. That's why okay. I'm here today. And I say he answered it uh, by way of the DEA. OK. Um, the DEA came in my house. Um, DEA, can you tell us what the that is? drug enforcement agency? OK. Um, okay. The, the government. I mean, the, okay. they, the big the big guys. OK. Um, they came in my house. It was 30 of them. Of course, it's a day wow. I will never forget. My daughter had just dropped off her six month old son, my first grandchild. Um, I was holding him in my hands, in hmm. my arms. Um, I had just copped. OK. Um, and this particular time, being a dealer, you know not to have your stuff bagged up. Dealers okay. know not to have it bagged up in case you do get caught. They'll get you for selling. Okay. Versus um, using it for yourself. Versus if it's just in a clunk. Yeah. OK. So uh, this particular day, since I had my grandson, um, I wanted to try the product out. And um, I had the guy that delivered it to me, my supplier, I had him bag it up for me okay. because I would not have time to do that with my grandson. Okay. So when anybody come, I would just be able to just give it to him. Okay. It was already bagged, so it was up. bagged up. It was bagged that up. That was a no-no. And I never, ever, never get my stuff bagged up. Okay. Um, shortly after that, uh, the, the feds came in, like I said. Um, I was caught red-handed, okay. you know, so, so you went to jail. I went to jail and they tried to give me 80 years. I was looking at 80 years, 80 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Never had a ticket, never had any problem with the law, nothing. Okay. And they were trying to give me 80 years, 80 years, 80 years. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when you got to jail, how, how, I mean, Ooh, I can't even think about how was it in jail? Um, it was the worst time of my life, but it was the best time of my life because I, I know today that God had to take me out of the situation. He rescued you. He had you. to. He rescued me um, because I didn't have sense enough to rescue myself. I didn't know how. And it wasn't until um, I, I, I was, was locked up that mm -hmm. I was able to get clean uh, enough to hear him. Okay. And um, so, um, of course, I, I rededicated my life to Christ while I was, was, was locked up. Okay. You know, um, my time in jail was was was, was good. Um, I was praying for people. Um, so now you they gave just, your life to the Lord. I didn't gave my life to the Lord. Okay. Um, for real, for real. <laughs> you know, begin begin my relationship. Okay. Uh, my mother was sending me uh, different uh, scriptures and word searches and everything to do with with God to to teach me and okay. ha so I have something to do. Okay. And for some reason, um, there were seven girls who protected me. Okay. Um, I was the oldest one in there. And they, these seven girls just surrounded me. They would not let anybody cuss around me. They would not let anybody steal my, my commissary or anything. You know, okay. they, they literally protected me. Okay. And um, so the first month, six weeks I was in there, um, I was lost in the system. Um, they have where you can call and find out your court date or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I would call and they had no Kathy Tandy. Um, so this you was, went it was on, like you weren't even in there? It was like I wasn't even in there. Oh, wow. So week one passed, week two passed, week three passed, week four passed. Um, I knew that I had to do my time um, because I knew I had messed up and I accepted that. Um, so you so was I was you make, was, so you, excuse me. So you was thinking you had to do 80 years mm -hmm. from there? Yeah, I, I. So you accepted I, that? I, I, yeah, 
I mean, because I had messed up, okay. you know, and one of the things I was told, and I'll never forget when I gave my life to Christ, is that um, just because you give your life to Christ, does not mean, that does not mean that what you did in society is going to be erased, whatever. I'm still accountable for what I did. Absolutely. And so I still had to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And um, at least that's what you thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> and I, I had peace with that. OK. You know, okay. And, and it settled in your heart because he loved me. He gave me peace with that. OK. And so he used me while I was while I was locked up okay. before anybody would go to jail. They would always come to me. Um, and it was not like I advertised and I'm this Christian and I'm going to pray and I can do all these wonderful things. He just he, they were just coming to me. OK. Um, and so. Um, Week four, five, six, seven went on. I'm still in good spirits, you know. Um, my mother's still sending me things. Um, I had all the money, commissary I needed. I had everything, I mean, that you could want. Okay. Um, I lacked nothing while I was in jail. And, um, yeah, it, 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 was, it, was, it was horrible, but it, it was wonderful. Um, so time went on, and week seven, week eight, the week seven, the end of week, week seven came mm -hmm. and girls were coming in and going out, coming. It was like a revolving door. So everybody was coming. Everybody and going, was coming and, and going. And you were still there. And, it, and I was still there. Okay. And um, I didn't understand. Okay. And so um, what I didn't understand was because the ones that were coming and going, they didn't say anything about changing their life. They didn't okay. say anything about um turning, you know, going to church, getting saved. The only thing they talked about was getting the person back, getting another hit, you know, who but they going to kick, what they going to do when they get out. Nobody never said anything about Jesus. Okay. Changing their life. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, okay, so what's that all about? Why? I'm doing what you tell me to do. I'm reading my Bible. I'm praying. I'm trusting you. I'm, 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 I'm doing everything that I know to do. And I'm still stuck here. Mm -hmm. And these other girls are in and out. And I mean, they come in. Some of them are in there for attempted murder. There were some there for fraud. They were, I mean, various types of things okay. that to me were worse than what I did. Mm -hmm. But but we know God don't operate. But we know way. God don't operate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So um, the end of week seven, I um, all of a sudden I, I, I went into this deep depression. And I woke up and I, I, I did not get out of bed that day. So you were just depressed. I was just depressed. I was mad. I was angry. I was depressed. I was hurt. I was scared. Were you still? You was in the word, though. You were, I, I was still in the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was in the word heavy because okay. mm -hmm. that's all I had. Yeah. Um, and so I had these these headphones. OK. That you get when you're locked up. Uh -huh. It's a little radio in the headphones. And every night I would go to sleep listening to 1310. Some words of um, encouragement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, so my bunkie every night would take my headphones off and okay. cut them off because they were for, for, by batteries. Okay. And they always looked out for me. So every night, you know, I would go to sleep with them on and every night they would take them off. This particular day, um, I stayed in bed all day long. I cried and I cried and I cried. So they would a, not let anybody, anybody near me. Okay. They would not let anybody near me. Uh, these seven girls. Okay. Uh, didn't nobody know what was going on. But um, I went through every emotion that there is. And by night, nighttime, um, I was exhausted. Okay. I was exhausted. I was, I had nothing left. I didn't even have a tear left. And I you literally passed yourself. out. Yeah. And so I had my headphones on. I passed out. I woke up at two o'clock in the morning to the song Smokey Norfolk. I understand. Mm -hmm. And it was right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. At that time, it wasn't um, it wasn't a, a, a new song. It was okay. an old song. And I couldn't believe I've never heard it before. But it was penetrated your heart. But Amen. I woke up. And I'll never forget it because I was sleep, sleep and I never sleep on my back, but I was sleep on my back. Mm -hmm. And I just sat straight up and I heard the words to this song about I see you, I understand. My God. 
He said he got the whole world in his hand. He said, you're not forgotten. Thank you, Jesus. And I went back to sleep after the song was over. And it was the best sleep I've ever had in my entire oh, life. I had such gave, a peace. He gave you some sweet sleep. <laughs> when I woke up that morning, they called me to AM court. Okay. Now, remember, I ain't had no court date. I wasn't even in the system. Okay. They called me to AM court. 17 hours later, I walked out of there. I was in there for two months, looking at 80 years, and the judge said time served. Amen. And I walked out of there. Mm -hmm. But you know, you told me about this story also, and mm -hmm. you said something about the judge said that if you come before you. If, if, I, if he sees me again, yeah. He, he said I would, do, I would do my time, I would do my full time. So d does that mean, did you go back to jail in order for that to happen? Mm -hmm. what happened? Okay. Yes. So you went I, had, I had went to jail, then I relapsed and went back. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. when you went back, he said that he was going to give you those 80 years. Yes. Yes. See, that's, he said, that's, if I see you in my courtroom again. Yes. See, that's just God's love mm -hmm. right there. Yes. And so when you relapsed and you went back to jail and you stood before him again, how did that work out? How, what did he say to you? Well, I'm sitting there with change in my orange suit. Mm hmm. And they called my name. I stood up. My lawyer stood up. Mm -hmm. And the judge did like this. So you just knew in your heart you was trying to get those 80 years, yeah, right? Yeah, I knew it. You know. Okay. And, 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 and I had accepted that. I had peace. God gave me peace even though I was looking. That's life. I mean, okay. I was 31 years old. That's life for me. And uh, he looked. And he just did like this. The courtroom was just silent. Okay. And my lawyer was looked at me, then he looked at the judge, and the judge just sat like there. It seemed like he sat there for like 20 minutes. And just he just shook his head. Really? And then he just said, get her out of my courtroom. That's all he said to you? That's all he said, get her out of my courtroom. They took me out. Next thing I know, they came and got me and told me, you're out of here. Time yeah. served. God. Bless my you. lawyer don't know what happened. Thank you. Father. My mother, all of us, I mean, we know what happened. Yeah, we know. You know the they knew what the happened. Baby much. Whew, yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I walked out of that 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 jail um, in two months for two months time served, looking at eighty years. Mm -hmm. oh. God said, "No, not this one." Thank he you, said, Jesus. They had this one. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I so, know you have heard this awesome testimony that mm -hmm. Kathy has shared with you. Don't give up. God is faithful. You know, mm -hmm. God is good because God is good, not because we're good. Yes. We're not good. There's mm -hmm. nobody good but God. So I want to encourage you, viewing audience, God loves you. I don't care what you've done, what it looks like, what it feels like. He loves you and he mm -hmm. doesn't give us what we deserve. So be encouraged today. Mm -hmm. Call out to his name. He's faithful. He loves you. And be encouraged. Kathy's testimony is an awesome testimony of God's love when you don't deserve. When you should have paid the price for what you've done wrong. God said no. And Kathy, I'm just so thankful that you had the courage to share your testimony. You know, because I'm finding people are not so quick to share their testimony because of shame. And we just come against that spirit of shame in the name and blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said, the reason we tell testimonies is that we can continue to show forth God's goodness in the land of the living. Mm -hmm. That our future generation knows that God is a good God and he's faithful and he don't give us what we deserve. So I need you to understand that viewing audience. So if you have a testimony that you want to share, share it. Share it and let God get the glory out of your, li out of your life. Kathy, thank you so very much thank for you. coming and mm -hmm. sharing your testimony. So before we go, I want you to look in this, in this camera right here, and I want you to pray for somebody or encourage whatever God puts on your heart. Share it with those people at this time. Hallelujah. There's nothing you can do to separate yourself from the love of God. He loves you no matter what. So be encouraged. If he did it for me, he will do it for you. He is no respected person. 
and all he wants you to do is just say, God help me. It's just that easy. But when you ask him to help you, mean it. He's faithful and he stands by his word. I know it not because of what I've heard or what somebody else said. I know it because I've experienced it. He literally saved my life. And he can do the same for you if you just ask him. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. What an awesome testimony. At this time, I just want to pray for that one who Kathy, who was talking to just a moment ago. We want to take time to just pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, that you love that one that you, that's viewing this, this show at this time. I declare peace in the name of Jesus. I bind that spirit of shame, guilt, and condemnation. And yes, I release the Jesus. peace of God even now. And mm -hmm. if the only thing they can say is help me, Lord. Father, you hear even the cry of those that are saying help. And so we declare peace even now. Father, yes, let them God. feel your presence right now in the name and blood of Jesus. And we declare that the gates of hell shall not, not prevail prevail. against you. In, in Jesus, Jesus name. name. Father, we thank you and we declare grace, grace even now. We yes. ask you, Holy Spirit, to send labors in their path yes, that will God. speak a word in due season that will set the captive free. And yes, we count God. it done even now in the done. name and blood of Jesus. Jesus. We say amen, amen. and amen. And I just amen. want to say thank amen. you for joining us on this episode of God's Love Reveal, where the love of God is made alive in you. There will be more, tes more testimonies to share his love and his grace. God bless you. The triumph of God's love. So what does all this mean? If God has determined to stand with us, tell me then, who could ever stand against us? For God has proven his love by giving us his greatest treasure, the gift of his son. And since God freely offered him up as a sacrifice for us all, he certainly won't withhold from us anything else he's given. Who then could dare to accuse those whom God has chosen in love to be his? God himself is the judge who has issued his final verdict over them, not guilty. Who then is left to condemn us? Certainly not Jesus, the anointed one, for he gave his life for us. And even more than that, he has conquered death and is now risen, exalted, and enthroned by God at his right hand. So how could he possibly condemn us since he is continually praying for our triumph? Who could ever separate us from God's endless love, God's anointed one? Absolutely no one. For nothing in this universe has the power to diminish his love towards us. Troubles, pressures, problems are unable to come between us and heaven's love. What about persecution, deprivation, danger, death threats? No, for they all are impotent to hinder the omnipotent love. Even though it is written, all day long we face death threats for you. God will consider to be nothing more than sheep to be slaughtered. Yet even in the midst of all these things, we triumph over them all. For God has made us to be more than conquerors. And his demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything. So now I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. I'm convinced that his love will triumph over death. Life's troubles, falling angels, dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or future world that can weaken his love. There's no power above us or beneath us. No power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love. Which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus, the anointed one. What a love, what a love, what a love, oh what a love, amazing love, what a love, what a love, what a love, so free, I've given all. 
to humanity. Oh, what a love! What a love! What a love! Amazing love! What a love! What a love! Receive my love! What a love! What a love! Receive. My love, what a love. Receive my love, oh, what a love, what a love, what a love, what a love, so free. I've given all to humanity. Receive my love. Receive my love. Receive my Love reveal.